Trying out or switching to an entirely new racing sim is never an easy task. So to help you simplify the start in Assetto Corsa Competizione, I'm gonna go over the two best cars for beginners and also compare them at the end of the video. But before we start with the first car, let me just quickly explain how I decided which cars are better suited for beginners. As you might know, there is a balance of performance system in place for the entirety of the cars in ACC. Meaning that on paper, all cars should be somewhat equally fast on any given track. So there is no car that is performing significantly better than all others or gives you an edge over your opponents just by picking it over the others. While the BOP is solid and all cars have the potential to clock in similar lap times, the difficulty to unlock this potential of theirs massively varies from car to car. Basically, long story short, the two cars I chose are the easiest to drive fast or unlock their potential to stay in the correct context to before, while also making the remainder of the get to know each other process between you and ACC a lot more enjoyable and less frustrating. So let's start with the first car, shall we? Starting off, there's the Aston Martin Vantage. At first glance, this car structure looks all too familiar to a car that isn't exactly easy to get started with. The Chunky Boy, aka the BMW. However, the only similarity they share is their heavy feeling as both are, well, bigger than average and therefore also a bit heavier. Controversial to the BMW though, the Aston excels in mid-speed corners and also in overall stability. I'd even go so far as to claim that it's almost impossible to accidentally unsettle this car since even if you throw it into a corner, the worst possible outcome is a tiny bit of understeer. The only slight drawback I could make out is the car's weight in slow corners. No, it still won't get unsettled if you overcook it in such. But you should take hairpins, or rather most the mechanical grip reliant corners, a bit more conservative than in some other cars. To give you an idea of what corners to watch out for, consider all of them that you have to take in second gear or below as a potential threat while safely ignoring all others. So, to sum it up, the Aston is unmatched in terms of stability, has enough power to be competitive at longer straights, and is more than solid in faster, more downforce reliant corners. In other words, it's the best car to get used to ACC's physics and quirks, together with another one that I'm gonna cover now. The alternative to the Aston is the Ferrari 488 Evo. But after hearing all the positives about the former, what exactly does the Ferrari bring to the table that the Aston doesn't? Well, in terms of raw grip and performance, the Ferrari can similarly to the Aston be thrown into any corner without the caveat of low speed ones, since it's a more sporty, lightweight car. But if you happen to overdo it, the Ferrari isn't as forgiving, meaning if you go into a corner too hot, the Aston is gonna understeer until you have slowed down enough for it to get back to grips, whereas the 488 actually has a real possibility of spinning out. But honestly, if you get to the point of being on the brim of spinning the Ferrari, you are doing something severely wrong. On the other side, the Ferrari's biggest edge over the Aston has nothing to do with raw performance, but rather with perception. You see, the 488 has a setup of its seat and windshield that allows its driver to perceive everything around at a much higher speed. It's a well-known effect of the Ferrari, where you are under the impression of being on the edge and carrying the maximum amount of speed into any corner, while you're actually having a considerable safety gap to the real limits of the car. Now, this might not sound like an advantage at first, since it's really slowing you down and hurting your lap times, right? Well, yes, but actually no. Here's why. The single biggest problem of people getting stuck at certain lap times isn't due to setups or their choice of car, but rather because they are constantly overdriving. It isn't uncommon for them having to take it a step back, braking earlier, coasting longer into corners and accelerating later to improve the lap times. And this is exactly where the Ferrari excels. It prevents you from overdriving since it already feels fast even though it isn't, if that makes sense. And by the time you notice that you are in fact not driving the car at its limit, you should already be so far 
as to be able to consciously weed out overdriving characteristics. Now that I went over both candidates, let's conclude which car is better to start out with for which type of person. Simply put, I feel like if you already have some sim racing experience in any simulator that isn't Project Cars 2, GT Sport or any title of the F1 series, I'd recommend you the Aston, since chances are you already have sufficient experience to recognize overdriving and are able to mostly avoid it while getting used to ACC's physics. On the other hand, if you have no real experience in any simulator or are switching over from any of the previously mentioned titles, then I'd rather advise you to stick with the Ferrari at first, since it will make sure you're not falling into any bad habits while simultaneously making you perceive the game faster, which is more similar to what you are probably used to from more casual games. So yeah, if you enjoyed the video or got something useful out of it, you could consider subscribing to the channel for more sim racing content. Take care.